Well, whoops. Hello, friends. <laughs> I'm Pearl of Wisdom. This is Peyton on the radio. Ooh. ATR, Peyton ATR, so I like to call him. And <laughs> we've been doing a lot of stuff together. We're doing a lot of collabing together. Um, mm-hmm. Now he's talking outside. He, he actually lets me hang out with the cool kids, and I get to talk to him every once in a while. It's pretty cool. I like it. I told my wife about it. She didn't believe me. But it's true. <laughs> so we get to hang out, and we do, and we talk about uh, lots of different stuff. And what we're, mm-hmm. we were we were do, doing thinking about doing a series about trades and what like val trading like take a player and say uh, okay if you take this player you trade him to a team and I'll trade him to a team and we'll do a deal and we'll see where that comes out. And we've taken a guy named Patch already. I, you might know. You might know. I hope so. If you're watching a hockey video and you don't know that, I don't know how you don't know that. But anyways, he's plays for the Vegas Golden Knights. And they are in cap hell. And uh, there has been a big rumor in the land that uh, he is going to be traded. So what it kind of turned into, though, is I think we're going to talk a lot about is what is the value of players right now, All right, Peyton? Oh, man, like, it is. It's a messy how do you world. Figure the value in this cap world. So I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play general manager a little bit. He's going to play general manager a little bit. We're going to talk about two teams. He came up with the team, like we mm-hmm. said we're going to do. I came up with the team. They were two different teams, but I like his too. And uh, we're going to talk about if they were to trade Pacioretty, where would they go? And what would the value be? Uh, okay, Peyton, from the famed Peyton on the radio, everybody in the land knows that. Where? Mm-hmm. What is your team to Vegas would trade Pacioretty to if that kind of a deal would go down? And uh, why do you figure it would be Pacioretty as well? So there's not a lot of teams that are out there right now that have enough salary cap to uh, swallow those types of players. Uh, the team that I picked uh, is a team that has been having a little bit of a weird off season, and that's the Nashville Predators. They haven't done too much yet uh, with their team. Uh, they signed a lot of depth guys and cousins, picking up Luke Coonan, uh, signed Borwicki and Benning. Uh, I think Patch Reddy would be a perfect guy. For the Nashville Predators, you guys need another goal scorer. Uh, you guys have a lot of playmakers in Duchesne and Johansson. Uh, this team would be perfect for a 30 goal scorer for sure. And uh, what's your team uh, where uh, where you think Pacioretty will be going to? Uh, my team would be the the Columbus Blue Jackets is the team I came up to. And I don't know why I kind of skipped over Nashville, but I see your point there. Uh, they could definitely be uh, a person, especially when I just looked at their their second line left winger at the moment mm-hmm. would be Yarn Crook. Well, that's yeah. not a deal at all. So uh, I, I see what you're saying, but I'm looking at the Columbus Blue Jackets. They they kept themselves a lot of cap room. Mm-hmm. Uh, now they are a small market, so it's possible that they've decided to not uh, spend to the cap. However, it has, hasn't seemed to bother them before to do so. Maybe with uh, COVID, it may become a problem. But at the moment, if they go into the season right now, they have Nick Foligno, who has been declining fairly rapidly, mm-hmm. playing that left side. Maybe um, they have a couple of young guys that could play there as well and uh, I'm trying to find him here now uh, Tessier Tessier mm-hmm. is a guy that could for sure but they have a lot of cost space and we know in the playoffs that uh, scoring wasn't there <laughs> wasn't what they were the best at that's for sure mm-hmm. so having a 30 plus goal scorer who's been a captain before for the Montreal Canadiens uh, who has um is big. He's strong. Uh, Columbus is not actually that big. I found that funny that when uh, they beat Toronto, people said, well, Toronto, see, this just proved that Toronto needs size. Well, Columbus didn't really have all much size either. They weren't a huge team either. So um, they could definitely use some size, especially with Max Domi up the middle there. And I just mentioned Max Domi. 
Pacioretty played for Montreal, you know, that sort of thing. I don't think he was there at the time, but um, it would be a boost for them to have a guy like Pacioretty with a guy like Max Domi, who has kind of shown to have a bit of a character issue. So having a captain maybe to play with him could be huge for them. Now the issue, though, Again, these are two teams we came up with, and we bantered a couple other teams, but I think these would be the two main teams that would likely have their hats out there. What's the value? What is what do, what do, what do you what are you what is a team like this gonna give up for Pacioretty uh, with Vegas really having no leverage at all, right? Yeah, well, they really don't, and we've seen it from the Paul Stastny and the uh, Nate Schmidt deal. Nate Schmidt deal was really nothing. I think it was like a third-round pick, and same with the Stastny one. I mean, Stastny wasn't really worth what his money was. Uh, was. He's still a really solid player, but they they haven't, like the first deal, they picked up a fourth from Winnipeg and a third from uh, Vancouver. And I, I think it might be the same with Patch already. You really think about it, uh, Vegas, they're under deep cap hell right now. Um, but I was thinking for Nashville, um, it might be a third, fourth for a third goal scorer, which will suck to lose because Patch Reddy is a very big goal scorer. But I think Vegas, they need somebody back in the deal. I was taking a look at it, kind of looking back and forth. And I think a guy like a Yankaruk or a Grimaldi might be a, a, a person that go back at $2 million or making very cheap deals. And for Patrick's value, it, it, it skews all over the place because we've heard rumors about them lowering down the salary cap. So what happens if it goes down to $5 million? Is, is contra- Will his value be, uh, I guess, more expensive? Will it be less? Um, who knows, honestly? It's been definitely a weird time for trades this year. We've been doing a, seeing a new style, I guess, of trades. I've seen tons of of cap dumps during this COVID era. Yeah, and that's the thing is something else to take into consideration is there's probably going to be a lot of players falling off the vine here Mm -hmm. down the road. There's going to be an unusually talented waiver list compared to usual, I imagine. And a lot of teams are just going to kind of wait it out and see what they can pluck without giving anything up before. Now, that being said... I doubt any of those people are going to be Pacioretty's. Pacioretty, sure, he's 33 years old, but he's a consistent 30-goal scorer. And he doesn't look like he's slowing down. When I watched mm-hmm. Vegas, I didn't see a guy slowing down. He's big. He's solid. Now, if I'm a general manager in, their sh- in, in say, Vegas' shoes, and, and what's his name again? I always forget his name. For who? Vegas. Oh, the GM for McCle- Vegas? McCle- McClellan. McClellan. Uh, McCrimmon, I think his McCrimmon, name is. Kel- McCrimmon. Kelly McC- McCrimmon. Kelly McCrimmon, right. I should know that. He played in the NHL. Uh, if I'm him, I'm probably going to wait till after that waiver wire, at least, if you can. And then the other general managers know that they have to be cap compliant before the season starts. So they're going to wait right down to the wire. But it, I I just have a feeling that while they're waiting down the uh, waiting for the wire, you're going to look at the waiver list and go, okay, there's no patch already here. And when it comes mm-hmm. right down to it, teams are in it to win the cup, especially in a shortened season. It gives it opens up the 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 possibilities for a team. It really does to win this year, right? It does. I mean, you've seen the Oilers right off the get-go last year. They started off, like, red hot. Same with Buffalo Sabres as well, right? And with this shortened season, you're missing out on a good 30 games, and especially near the tail end of the season. Usually those 30 games are pivotal, whether you're a playoff team or not. So the 56 games, we've seen it when there was a locked uh, lockout, too, that cut the season in half. It was crazy. Some teams that you didn't expect making it to the playoffs did. So this salary cap crunch that we're really going to be in it with a lot of teams you're going to be seeing a lot of last minute moves and you're going to be looking at those trades saying like what the hell is going on like with these deals and you're going to be seeing fifths being flipped for 30 goal scores it's 
I, I feel like it's going to be a really weird uh, start to January once it becomes 2021. I feel yeah. like it's going to be a weird start. Yeah, I, I have a feeling, though, that if a general manager is smart, you might end up getting value if you've got two guys in mm-hmm. it. Say, for instance, I'm, you're, you brought up the fact that they give up like a yarn crook or a Grimaldi. Those, player, those are pl- not players without value. They have mm-hmm. they they are they're especially Grimaldi. I really love Grimaldi. Actually. I love Grimaldi too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would not want to be giving up Grimaldi in that deal if I didn't have to. But let's say you know Nashville. I think it was a great pick to pick Nashville because they are fairly desperate. Like this is not a team that has a huge prospect pool where they can say, okay, we can bring up young guys and slowly retool. This is do or die for the Nashville Predators. Mm-hmm. So, um, you could uh, uh, McCrimmon, 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 Kelly McCrimmon <laughs> could identify that as you know def- identify Nashville and go. These guys are desperate. I'm going to hold out. I'm not taking some third or fourth. I want Grimaldi in a second or something like that. And yeah. like you said, just before the season starts, Poyle comes up and says, "Okay, we'll give you, a, we'll give you the second, or we'll give you Grimaldi and something or like that." And then I and then McCrimmon called. Cl- goes over to Kekalainen and says, hey, we got a new game here, man. You know, <laughs> and and I'm and now I'm Kekalainen, and I'm looking at my roster, and I have um, possibly the best coach of all time, maybe by the end of his career, in Tortorella. And the, what he can do with the team. I'm not going to have Gustav Nyquist this year. So um, that – takes it down a notch already as far as offensive depth is concerned. Injuries could kill this team real quick. I could go, oh my gosh, okay, so I you're they're offering that. I got a choice. I can go, oh no, that's too steep for me, or I could go, oh, you know what, this is playoffs or not here. Kekka Linen has showed to be a guy who doesn't mind taking risks to make the playoffs, obviously. Mm-hmm. Right? He kept Penn he and he kept, you know, so he might go down his roster and say, okay, what do you want? Uh, well, I want Tessier. And I'm like, wow, well, I don't like that idea too much. I mean, I don't want to give up a young kid like that for that. Maybe Andrew Peak and, uh, or maybe they say, screw it, we'll give you our first next year. You know, if they can get this competition going between a couple teams that are desperate, and I think we just identified two of them, you never know. They might be able to pull some value out of this guy if they're, if they're going to, if they're going to hold 2 million back. Yeah, see, the thing is with uh, McCrimmon now, uh, he doesn't have that much of a hold, like we were saying, against Columbus and Nashville because they could just go to other teams. There's there's a, a lot of other teams that need to get over the salary cap with St. Louis, Tampa Bay, Toronto, uh, Vancouver still needs to get over, same with Washington and Winnipeg. So, and especially there's some free agencies in there. Like you got Duclair and Hoffman, they're still available targets, especially for Nashville. If they're looking for some young guys to come into the team, there, there's going to be a lot of possibilities. So it, maybe once the free agency pool kind of goes dry, you might, you might see McCrimmon maybe start pulling those types of moves that you were talking about, trying to pull that leverage of Max Pacioretty, which would definitely be a smart idea for the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, but I think for Vegas, they need to bring somebody back in this deal. If there are train away patch ready, they need to get somebody back on the team uh, as a goal scorer or just someone to be in depth because you're losing a big time 30 goal scorer from the team and you're not going to really be able to easily replace that uh, even with Yang Karuk or Grimaldi or whoever from uh, um, from Columbus. Uh, you bring up a good point because that's where the where the leverage kind of can go down the crapper. However, I don't think even out of you, you mentioned a whole bunch of teams like St. Louis, Tampa Bay, possibly with Tampa Bay, you might be able to scoop like a Kalorn or something like mm-hmm. that. But um, that's probably going to cost you a little more. But there's a lot of there's there's a lot of teams that are going to have to drop guys off now most of these teams i think will find somebody to put down in the minors uh or put on waivers Mm -hmm. they'll end up putting a pretty decent player on waivers and you could scoop that up so really they don't really have all that leverage the only the only way they could possibly have leverage 
as you said, is if those teams find a way without having to give up a significant player, Hoffman goes to someone else quick here in the next little while. The free Which I agency- feel like will. There's been analysts saying that's. I think stuff is going to pick up here soon. And it'll either be after Christmas, I feel, or when we hit into 2021. Yeah, they're probably waiting until after Christmas if they can because it sucks to have guys getting traded during Christmas and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, nobody really likes to do that to people's families and all that. But you don't have much time after Christmas and you're already in uh, pre- preseason and on the second. A lot of teams are already in pre- on preseason. And you so- have to quarantine this year too. So there's like really there's nothing really that you can do for a last-minute move because if you're waiting to do a last-minute move, that player – has to quarantine for 14 days and that's a good two weeks out of a 56 game schedule it's it's gonna be pretty crazy what we're gonna be seeing here in the next couple days and what teams are gonna do because trades are gonna be definitely different this year i don't think you're gonna see as much trades this year so i feel like a lot of things are gonna be picking up here soon we were hearing rumors about tyler johnson going to detroit for zetterberg I, I feel like stuff is going to pick up here soon so players can go to quarantine and get ready for this upcoming season. Because if you have to travel to Canada and you're from America, it's going to be a pain to get over the border and stuff like that. So it's going to be a uh, it's going to be crazy. I'm excited and, for the way this offseason is going to end. And that's the other thing is Pacioretty does have uh, what, what did, was it a 12 team? I think ten it's a team. ten team, ten no, team, no ten trade team, no trade clause, and I don't know about you, but I'm not really cool with going, getting traded somewhere and being quarantined. You know, oh. I he he could just say I'm he could easily figure out the teams that would be able to afford them and just say, yeah, I don't want to go to all these teams here. Uh, uh, this is my no trade list, and mm-hmm. pretty much make it so it's impossible to trade them, and they'll have to figure out another way to do it anyways i personally think that's more the most likely equation however they did put patcheretti out there did they like it was in the media anyways uh that he that patcheretti was available they didn't yeah. argue it they never said no no patch is not available so there had to be some discussion with patcheretti on which teams he may be able to go to or something or that nature. yeah patcheretti has to submit like a 10 team no trade list automatically to them so they they're probably working around it and we've seen tons of like people on the block from vegas right now from march assault to patcheretti to flurry to just about everyone on that team is available yeah. to be traded, which I feel as a team, it's definitely not a good rep to hold as a GM saying that your whole team is available when you're trying to push for the cup. It's kind of weird, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've said I've said this right from the beginning that the way they've gone, the direction they've gone, was going to blow up in their face eventually. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, yeah it, it really is going to blow up in their face, and whatever they do with this match ready deal, I feel like they're going to lose it. They lost the Nate Schmidt deal. They lost the Paul Stastny deal. I think no matter what, Patch Ready or whoever you trade away, it will be a loss for the Vegas Golden Knights because you're losing a 20, 30 goal scorer for your team no matter what. So no matter what happens with the Vegas Golden Knights, it's going to be a loss in value for them. It's horrible asset management uh, yes. in my that's idea. Of, that's a great way of putting it. By the way, we just did the Las Vegas Golden Knights as on our series here. Uh, I'd highly recommend you go check it out before we go and tell you rehash it all over again. Go check it out. We we both generally, it seems that Peyton and I mostly agree, uh, and with John as well. I'm trying to find somebody that can come on and totally disagree with us all the time. <laughs> <laughs> or at least sometimes, anyways. But when when you when you look at it from a whole, and and we we study the game a lot, usually it comes out pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. Um, this has been great, Peyton. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, no problem. I, this uh, I really it's 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 going to be an exciting times in the next couple of days. I totally it agree will be. with you. Uh, now that they're going to have to be quarantined for fourteen days, it's almost like a no trade deadline all over again here uh, here right now if they're going to make moves at all it's going to be interesting to see which which players um decide that they don't want to go uh like the the how they try to get rid of them but it, it's if i have an ntc right now i'm like 
I don't want to go anywhere. I'm going to try to stay where I am. I don't even really care if the team doesn't want me. I just don't want to go quarantine for 14 days and all that stuff like that to do all that crap uh, at this time. So, uh, however, I do believe there will be trades. There's no doubt about that. Mm, well, yeah, there There's will be. going to have to be some moves for a lot of these teams, like I said before. I hope you enjoyed this fine programming. What do you think Pacioretty? Where do you think Pacioretty will go? What do you think the value of a Pacioretty is right now? Um, we're going to be bringing up other names here in the next little while. I think we'll, we'll be talking about their trade value, where they may go. There's a lot of players right now that are sitting at the edge of their seat wondering if uh, this is going to be the last day playing for their team. <laughs> so Peyton, uh, we'll catch you again. Go check out Peyton on the radio, man. He does... Uh, he does. He likes to play the games there, the video yep. games. Yes, and he's doing uh, 2021, right? Is it? Yeah, NHL 21. I got the new game, and I'm doing the Seattle Kraken franchise mode. I did the expansion. We won a cup recently, so we're trying to go back to back right now. Yeah, I, I watched one where he was doing the Rangers, and I've never seen somebody so disappointed in my life. He was like, <laughs> just pissed. <laughs> It's like he might as well have been watching an Oilers game in the mid in the in the, the mid well. two thousands, man. It was freaking brutal. So yeah, I highly recommend you check it out. Have a great day, everybody. Check out www.steelflyers.com, all sports network. I'm telling you, it's gonna blow your mind.